MG, yeah, you know what I'm about. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you guys for joining me on my channel today. A little bit earlier, I went live and I was doing like this first impressions type of thing with the FabFilter Pro Q3. This is a new plugin from FabFilter that came out today. If you're watching this video, November 29th. <laughs> and what happened was I ended up getting FabFilter Pro Q2 for Black Friday. And then yesterday or within the last 24 hours, we received an email about the announcement of Pro Q3. And for existing recent customers, they automatically upgraded us to Pro Q3, or at least that's the email that I received. And I know that's going to be a common question for a lot of you who have existing um, copies of Pro Q2, maybe from a couple months ago or maybe a year or so ago. I believe the paid version update of this particular app is going to run you about $60. However, what I'm most excited about with this plugin was something they call an unmasking feature. And this is something a lot of you may be familiar with from Isotope Neutron. However, in my live video, I was unable to get that to work and it was quite frustrating unless I started to sidechain things. And then of course that's not very useful when you're dealing with multiple tracks with this plugin instance. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite features of this plugin. I'm gonna show you how to get that feature to work properly because I figured it out since and just kind of give you a taste of what this is about. So first things first, here's a very simple loop that I put together. I'm using the new Wave Synth that also came out for Cyber Monday, Black Friday, the Flow Motion. That's gonna be my pad and my bell sound. I got a vocal sample and then the rest is drums in the 808. So I'm head over to my mixer. I'm in Studio One version four. On every track, I have something called Relay, and I'm kind of setting the stage with negative 12 dB so I don't run into any of these particular plugins too hot. In my live stream, I was using this version of Pro Q3, and this is the VST3 version. This is the version I expect to use in almost all my plugins, and especially in Studio One. When I make a snapshot, I try to make sure it's a VST3 plugin. However, that feature that I need to work doesn't work, and I'll show you. So I'm gonna bring a Pro Q3 here, and I'll bring a Pro Q3 here, and that's on my pad and my Vox. And what you're supposed to be able to do is click on this little analyzer icon and then hit the Vox and have it animate within my patch track. And as you can see by this display, the only thing that's lighting up, which is the masking alert, is down here and not in the plugin itself. So I thought it was a dud. That's not the case, however. <laughs> and I'm gonna use the VST2 version instead. I'm gonna set it as a favorite and then I'm gonna add it as a thumbnail as well. That'll show up there. So now I know when I'm browsing through my plugins, this is the snapshot that I'm looking for. This is the version that I'm looking for. And now I get the feature that I'm looking for. So let's set up a few buses. I'm gonna select all these drums. I'm gonna add them to a bus. I'm gonna call it drum bus. I'm gonna do the same thing with my instruments in my box and call it a key group or key bus. And now I can focus on just those elements. And I'm gonna rebalance the faders on these. And let's actually work on that voice versus the pad. So I'm bring up the EQ that's on my box. So with this particular spectrum, we can see, I'm gonna go ahead and high pass that. So I'm gonna enable it, bring it up. And this is a very clean and transparent EQ. If you haven't used any of the FabFilter products before, they're really pro level, um, very surgical, almost like a sculpting and sound designing specialty type of EQ. So now what I'm gonna do is go down here where we have Analyzer, and you notice all three icons are there by default, which isn't the case on VST3. So when I click on that, you're gonna see my other two channels. And I'm gonna click on the second one, which is my pad. And now we get to see both. So what I wanna do is wherever this frequency overlap is starting to turn red, there's masking. So I can go to either instance of this EQ and correct that. So if I correct it on this instance, that's the voice. So I can cut the voice out of the low end of the pad since the pad sounds more filtered and needs more of its low end presence. So I'll probably use this Q band here and turn it into a notch. I might keep it there and sweep the frequency that was in red on my pad track. <laughs> So especially here, it looks like. Bring my high pass back a little bit. 
So you can hear my pad and my voice clearly now. I'm gonna try to bypass it and see if it's a noticeable difference. You hear like the fog that's in the voice now? It's gone. So that masking feature is very useful for that. Let's see, I think I can name that. Vox. Let's go to this one. Call this one Pad. And I'm assuming this one's Bell. So my Vox has a lot of overlapping frequencies with that Pad, but the Vox importance is in the higher end. So maybe this purple band, it's a Bell shape. Let's remove some of that from our Pad. No crazy overlap. But the voice is mainly in there, it looks like. Or these two bands. Without it? With it. Everything is crazy pristine. So I'm gonna take these two together. I like them as equal level. I'm gonna turn them down to about negative six. So my voice rises right around here. I'm gonna cut that out of the bells. So it gives our ear a chance to find every sound. Nice, now I can turn this down. So now we're gonna bring another one onto the 808. This is pretty straightforward. Let me go ahead and solo that. One of my favorite features on this particular EQ is something called brick wall. This is something very reminiscent of isotope ozone. So where you normally have like low cuts or high passes, depending on how you perceive this particular filter, you have the step octaves that you expect, but this one kind of has them all. And this kind of makes it compete with the Sonic CQ that people are very fond of um, in the UAD collection or the standalone Sonics plugins. Its EQ was always touted because it has some really dope low pass and high pass filters. This one allows you to do the same exact thing um, to a large extent, but the brick wall is absolute and is not really resonant. So it sounds really clean when you cut things off and I'll show you with this 808. I'll push it all the way up. So it's really clean sound. And you probably don't even hear this unless you have your headphones on. But what you can then use that for is to kind of separate your 808s and your basses into, you know, kind of like uh, faux multiband. You know, take one copy of the 808 where it's just a low with a high cut brick wall. And then the other part where it's like the mids and highs like this and use that. And then side chain one versus the other, distort one versus the other, that kind of thing. So it's very surgical and probably perfect for that, especially so she probably just put it in the linear phase and it'll be lit. But in this particular 808, I'm just gonna cut off like 22 hertz or so. Actually, I think it's 33. One of these bands you don't hear through your phone or your headphones. And since most of my stuff is going straight to SoundCloud and YouTube, why even have it in there? So we still hear my 808. And then I'm gonna high cut it, AKA low pass it. And let's see how far we can bring that back. Let's make it a little bit steeper. Now I wanted to save the drums for last, especially to balance that 808. So the drums would be real quick. So they're overlapping the same frequency. So what I'll do is I'll pan them opposite of each other. This one's far left. I'll nudge this one to the right. And on here, when we look at hi-hat, there's an extra hi-hat that's being pitched down. I'll go ahead and bell curve that one. right around here. So everything is clean. And then I'll add EQ to that kick so I can compare it to the 808. So we, even without hearing the 808, I can see the frequency where my kick is dominating. And if you turn this keyboard on, you can even see what key it's in. Let's turn my 808 back on. Now 
Now there's a lot of rumble in that 808. So instead of me cutting or high cutting my kick, because it's a kick, I'm gonna use something called a shelf. It's just a regular tilt shelf. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the, fre the lower frequencies of the kick there and raise up the rest. I'm gonna look at the two buses together. So this is my drum bus. I'm gonna go ahead and name it that, and then look at my instruments, call it the same. And now what I can do is compare those two buses. So my snare is here. I'll bring that down on my key bus, but make it a narrow cue. And my kick is right there. So I could probably cut that or we could try out our new flat tilt. And flat tilt is just like the other tilt I use except for it's perfect. So because I value my kicks and I need that space for the low end and the bass and everything, and this is the key bus, I will end up raising some of the high frequencies of everything beyond the kick. I might even go higher. I can actually do the opposite too. I might be able to sweep it the other way and give more room to my hi-hats. I'll just listen to both and see which one feels better. Like you can almost filter it out. And it'll shrink the instruments and push them back. Then I'll use this one as a high cut or low cut, I should say, and make it brick wall and move it up to where my drums start. And let's flat tilt this one as well. This is one of their new shapes. I might cut my kick down and sacrifice it for more hi-hat action. Since this isn't touching the 808, my super sub or my bottom is intact. And let's look at that key bus. That pad's important frequencies are there. Let's see if we can sacrifice that. Final touches, you use it as a mastering EQ. And all I'm gonna do here is two brick walls on both sides. I'm gonna bring it all the way back so you can hear how clean it is. The separation is crazy. It's not super resonant around the peaks. Then what I might do, I notice a lot of my energy is here. And what's cool about this, you could change it to mid, side, left, right, up, down, up, down, A, B, start. So I'm gonna do mids. And in the mids, I'm gonna turn that frequency down. So it spreads to the side more. I'll move out the way of the snare though. And the same thing with like this kick frequency, what I might need to do is notch it so I can hear it. It looks like the notch is only down. I guess they don't want you to notch going up. That might actually hurt your ears, right? So we're gonna try bell shape, a high Q, and let's find the ugly frequency because we know it's here. That's solid. And then to hear how it really all sounds the way it needs to. I'm just gonna throw a basic limiter on there. I would use their pro limiter, but I don't possess a license for it. So I'm gonna use Waves L2 right around there.
let me uh, bring it back and just bypass them just the mastering settings which is crazy so subtle In fact, let's put this on linear phase. Sounds beautiful, man. Definitely gotta check it on the loudspeaker, so make sure I didn't kill too much bass frequencies. And do the car test, as always. But anyway, that is the FabFilter Pro Q3. There's a lot of other EQs you could talk about and compare it to, the Surfer EQs, the Gold False EQs. All of them are great for your tool belt, but as you can see in here, this particular one, um, I don't see how you can be a mix engineer or producer without it. That's in my opinion, <clears throat> and this isn't a sponsored video. So <laughs> it, 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 do as thou wilt. If you get time, check out the live video. You see me cook up two other beats using this EQ as well, exploring different things and different sounds and decision making. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions, concerns about this particular video, leave them in the box below. If you stumbled across this video, try to figure out what it's about. Definitely leave a like or subscribe if you're interested for more videos like this. Until next time, guys. Peace.